This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi, I'm Kay Choi. Welcome back to my channel. A few weeks ago, I uploaded a video where I interviewed my friend Judy, who used to be a consultant at a big three or top three consulting firm, specifically Bain. A lot of you seemed to really like that video and find it helpful, so I will link it in the description box if you haven't seen it yet. Some people were asking and requesting that I do a video with somebody who works at a big four consultancy, and that is what this video is going to be. This is actually the first of two videos that I'm doing in collaboration with Steph and Den, who have a YouTube channel where they they talk about career and finance advice for young professionals. Both Steph and Den work at big four consulting firms, so they have a lot of great insight to offer, and I'm really excited to share the interviews with you, as well as share their channel so you can find more information and really great content over there. In this video, I'm interviewing Dennis, who works at a big four firm as a CPA consultant, and I actually learned a lot about what he does, so really excited to share some of his advice and his experience with all of you. Before we jump in, if you're not already subscribed, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and while you're there, hit the notification bell as well so you can be notified whenever I post new videos like this. Hey Dennis, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing much, I'm really excited to have you on um, and I think that you're gonna have a lot of cool insights to share uh, with my subscribers. So let's just dive right in and could you just share about your role today, what you do and just your career path that you kind of took to get there? I think I have a bit of a, you know, a different, I guess, non-conventional pathway just because the way that I, I look at my career path, I think of it as, you know, it started back when I was in school. I think what I kept hearing and what, what was going on at the time was, you know, in order to get a job, you need experience. And in order to get experience, you need a job. So I sort of took that to heart and I figured I need to make sure that I have an internship and I have a job every single summer of school so that I can, you know, increase my chances of actually getting hired full time. So with all that being said, you know, I got to work with a, a lot of great companies, but I didn't actually get into the firm while I was in school. Fast forward to me, you know, graduating, I got a job at the bank, you know, didn't really love that. But, you know, I kind of kept networking, kept, you know, kept, kept in touch with a lot of my connections that I made while I was in school. And eventually that turned into that turned into a job at the firm. So not as a campus hire, but as an experienced hire. Basically what I do now is I'm what I would categorize myself as a CPA consultant. A lot of the projects that I do require you know, my group who focuses a lot on finance and accounting projects. So we're, we're CPAs, I guess, in the background, but you know, we are consultants front facing, you know, doing projects and that type of work. Could you tell me about what that process was like to get into the firm that you're at today? So like the interview process and what you kind of did to stand out in that in that whole process? I guess I guess like I said before, it, it definitely all started back when I was in school and, you know, building the connections over time, you know, really getting my name out there and, you know, meeting a bunch of different individuals. This not only helped me get into the firm, but it also allowed me to understand what people actually do when they're in consulting or you know working at a firm in general right another really big thing definitely once again was you know me buckling down and trying to get an internship every single summer you know not only did it allow me to you know work with a lot of great companies but when it when it came time to my actual interview and actually you know whole process uh, of going through the recruitment cycle everyone that i spoke to i was able to adequately talk about the different experiences that i'd had in the past and I think that's one of the, the biggest factors. It's your ability to communicate that you're someone who's going to be able to add value. And that, that all comes with, you know, different experiences, right? So that was definitely one of the key factors. Talk me through your role today. Um, I know you touched on it a little bit of like your CPA consultants, but can you just tell me more about your role today? Yeah, so, you know, I guess essentially I'm a consultant within an advisory team, right? And given the fact that we are CPAs, we do get into the weeds a lot and we definitely focus a lot on the finances of a company, right? So whether it be looking at, you know, different financial models and looking at the accounting function or the finance function as a whole and seeing where we can we can find different process improvements to better equip not only the CFO, but everyone that falls under the CFO with you know, the knowledge that they need to do their jobs better and act as an advisor, I'd say. How do you get staffed on those different projects and determine what you're going to be working on next? I think this is a really good question. And I think a lot of people sort of have this curiosity 
around, you know, staffing and whether you need to like network onto projects, that whole thing. So specifically at my firm, I'm not sure how, you know, other firms do it, but each and every group that's external facing has what we call a resourcing manager. So this is an individual whose primary focus is, is to handle the scheduling of pretty much all the employees and make sure that everyone, you know, from my level all the way to like managers, I guess, is on billable, chargeable work. So they're actually, you know, doing adequate work that's bringing in money for the firm. Where that sort of deviates and gets into like the whole networking piece would be if you're someone who's interested in a specific industry, you're interested in a specific area, interested in a specific project, if that's you, then you need to do the whole, you know, messaging people, booking coffees, and, you know, really trying, really trying to get out there and show that, you know, not only are, are you wanting to get on this project, but you're someone who's also high performing. And it's sort of a cycle where a lot of the high performing individuals continuously get on a lot of, you know, the good projects, right? If you're someone who wants to, you know, diversify your, your, your work, you want to try different things, then you got to get into all that. What's your favorite thing about kind of the focus area that you're in today? And then what's maybe like the most challenging thing? I think my favorite thing would definitely be the fact that I'm learning how a business operates or a lot, of, a lot of different businesses in you know, various industries operate from a financial perspective. If you're someone who's, who at one point in their life wants to you know, start their own business or you know, exit into you know, an industry role, I think understanding a business's finances, but more importantly, being able to articulate that to people who don't necessarily understand a business's finances is super key and that's, that's sort of one of the main focuses that I've, I've had experience with, right? So you might be some, someone who understands finances, but if you can't articulate that to someone who doesn't, then you're not necessarily doing a very good job within our team. So I think one of the most challenging parts would definitely be, would definitely be the perception, I guess, going into consulting. I feel like there's a lot of people who, you know, view consulting as this, you know, high performance world where you're consistently, you know, rubbing elbows with VPs, CEOs, and, and whatnot of like fortune 500 companies but that's a lot of the time not the reality and you know when you're first starting out you really need to learn a lot of the fundamentals and get to a certain point where you're you're able to adequately you know communicate certain things especially when you're in a role that like mine where we primarily deal with financials right so until you sort of get you know get the fundamentals down you're not you're not necessarily going to be dealing with the CEOs, talking to the VPs, right? And I think that's, that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow because that's sort of the branding around consulting, you know, high performance, consistently, you know, talking to all these high level people, right? What are some of those fundamentals that you found yourself learning in those, you know, in the first few months of your job? I think for a lot of us who come from that accounting and finance background, we're not really accustomed to dealing with presentations and making, you know, making attractive presentations, I should say, actually. You know, I think I think that was sort of a transition for me. Like I'm I'm good I'm good with, you know, reading financial statements and looking into, you know, different finances. But when it comes to actually putting and packaging a, a deck together that not only articulates the numbers, but also, you know, looks presentable, I think that's also an adjustment. And th those are some of the tools that I really had to pick up on and, you know, kind of struggled with in the beginning. Yeah, like making it really digestible for somebody who's taking a glance at it. Absolutely. It's like a really valuable skill just in general, for sure. Before we wrap up this interview, I want to tell you about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You know that on this channel, I try to create content that can inspire you to go and achieve your goals and navigate life after college or through college, navigate all the job options out there. I'm really excited to partner with Skillshare for that reason because they allow you to keep learning no matter what stage of your life you're in and their classes allow you to explore your creativity or build a business or live a more productive lifestyle. As a full-time consultant and a YouTuber on the side, I'm always trying to find ways to live more productively. So I'm currently taking the class Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less, led by Greg McEwen. In this class, we're exploring the idea of essentialism, how to determine what's essential, and how to maintain 
maintain that mindset and use different tools to keep yourself accountable. I'm also excited to explore some classes related to film and video and graphic design just so I can continue to improve the production quality on this YouTube channel. The classes are really digestible, not overwhelming, and I'm glad that I have this option to dedicate some of my screen time to something that will help me be more productive. Skillshare does have a membership fee which is less than $10 a month if you get an annual subscription. The good news is that means there are no ads and there are also always new premium classes being launched so you have lots of options to explore new topics and gain new skills. So if you want to try out Skillshare for yourself, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity on Skillshare. Again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and I hope those of you watching get some really good value out of the classes that they offer there. So I've also heard that at like big consulting firms there are also different extracurriculars that you can get involved in like leading a project or a special project or team. So could you tell me more about that too? When it comes to extracurriculars, this is definitely something that I was not prepared for in the sense that although we hear about people getting involved, I actually didn't realize that it was associated to your performance. Within your performance, it's actually baked in that you should be getting involved and actually make having an impact on, you know, your firm or the community at large. For me, I figured if for one, I'm gonna have to do this as a part of my performance. I wanna do it in something that I truly care about. So, you know, one of the initiatives that I'm involved in is our Canadian Black Professionals Network, which is an organization that's for, you know, our black professionals across the country. And the idea is to create a space where they can network with one another and also connect them to other, you know, black professionals within different cities who aren't necessarily at the firm. And another really cool project that I've been able to work on was a pro bono project. Our firm has this initiative where, you know, they group different people from different pillars and service lines. So, you know, it could be someone from my team, someone from, you know, tech consulting, someone from the our AI group. They're all grouped together and the idea is for you guys to help out an organization that's either a nonprofit or someone who either who wouldn't be able to afford our services otherwise. It's really cool when you when you can utilize your professional services, you know, experience to actually have an impact on the community. You know, you can you can do fun stuff too, right? When it comes to extracurriculars, that's you know, not necessarily not, not necessarily work related. So for example, for me during the winters here in Canada, I run pickup basketball for a bunch of different people across the firm. So, you know, if you're into basketball, whether, you know, whether you're good or not, I'll rent out a gym on, you know, behalf of the firm and I'll invite a bunch of people and we'll come down and we'll pick, we'll play pickup every, you know, like Thursday or something. So what are your plans um, kind of in the future, a few years down the line? You know, what do you see yourself doing? One of the cool things about consulting is once again, you know, the ability to work on different projects and really sort of narrow down whether it be the industry or the type of work that you want to get into. So for me, I've always sort of had this passion when it came to real estate. For me, it's been something that's really simple to understand and I've had the opportunity to actually learn how, you know, different organizations buy certain assets and, you know, buy real estate. So taking that experience that I have from, you know, from a CPA perspective and, you know, joining, potentially joining in the future, a group that specializes in you know asset management and is really engulfed in that whole real real estate space i think that's where i sort of see myself at what about advice for people who are wanting to work at a big four consulting firm like you so if you're wanting to work at a big at a big four firm in consulting i say keep shooting your shot you know the reason that i say this is is if you can take away anything from this interview from my experience like i said i networked all throughout school and I did not get a job. I got, I came close, you know, had an interview, didn't end up securing the, securing the job. But, you know, once I finished school, I still was at it and I still kept applying. And although I didn't come in as a campus hire, I was still able to, you know, get the job as an experienced um, individual, quote unquote experienced after five months. Um, <laughs> the, the moral of the story is if you keep, if you keep at it and if, and if this is something that you want, then go for it. But at the same time, make sure you're reevaluating whether this is something you actually want to do. Like we said before, you know, there's this whole there's this whole perspective that, you know, consulting big four firms is the above all end all. Really, it isn't. And you know, if you hold it to that pedestal and you don't do your research, you're going to be disappointed once you get the, once you get to the job. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that are great, but it is just a job, just like any other any other job, right? So keep shooting your shot and reevaluate.
That's great advice. And I think it's super inspiring to see. I'm so glad to have you on the channel to share how you went from, you know, being hired as an experienced hire when a lot of people do think about those campus hires that, you know, get hired right out of undergrad. So it's really cool Absolutely. that you could share that experience. I'm glad you invited me onto the channel and, you know, I'm super pumped. And if anyone has any questions, they can feel free to reach out to me on, on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. So, um, you know, send me a message. And um, like I've said, kind of in the intro, you know, Dennis and Steph, they post lots of really helpful videos just about working at big four consulting firms, just career advice in general, as well as finance too, right? So um, be sure to check out their channel for a lot of really helpful information. Yeah, check us out, Steph and Den. All right. Well, thank you so much. Bye. Bye, guys. That's it for this video. I really hope that Dennis's experience and advice was really helpful and answered a lot of questions for you. Again, there's going to be a part two where I interview Steph about her experience working at a big four firm, and she provides a lot of really great advice for people who want to work at a big four firm, whether it's in consulting or in a different department. Thanks, Dennis, for taking the time to answer some questions. Be sure to check out Steph and Den's YouTube channel. I will link it in the description box as well as their social media, so go and follow them and show them some love. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!